as energy. We have this morphogenetic field around us. So uh, then Rupert Sheldrake, uh, a, a, a British uh, biologist, a scientist, he, uh, he came up with the notion of what's called morphic resonance. So with the people uh, like the VibraVision people, when you're dropping the colored beanbags in their hand, they're feeling the resonance of that energy. And so they're able to translate that into what's actually going on. So let's take this back to the experience that you had. In uh, uh, So when you, you are picking that up in the field, so we generate this field around ourselves and... Um, how we generate that field is we have three electromagnetic centers that are really, really important in the body. One of them is our chakras. Another one is the electromagnetic center around the heart and the electromagnetic center around the brain. Now, the one around the heart has over 4,000 neurites around the heart. And a neurite is like a neuron in the brain. So it can think, it can remember, it can give commands, it can do these things. So it's, it is sending this information uh, creating that field around us. And so our field will talk to other people's field when we get with, as a general rule, about three feet we, within the proximity of somebody. We can feel uh, if they're having a good day or a not so good day, or our intuition uh, may be coming from the energy that is moving through that field. Now, what we do with that energy uh, really depends on the morphic resonance. So like the, uh, uh, the VibraVision people, they could tell me what the colors were or that they could navigate poles or drive the go-karts or whatever because they were using the energy in that. So our intuition is very much the same. Uh, a few years ago, I was on, uh, in a movie uh, called PGS, Your Personal Guidance System, uh, Intuition. And uh, so I was a neuroscientist explaining intuition. I know a lot more today than I did back then. Right. But, yeah. So anyway, as you have created this field around you and your intuition can now speak to you and we can also uh, attract that energy from other people or other uh, beings that the energy does not die. It only changes form. And I so- uh, being able to uh, uh, receive that information. And then through this field, we are then be able to begin to translate what that is. And we call it a intuition. So it's that inner being, that inner part of ourself right. that is um, uh, that we are connecting with. And a lot of people, and <laughs> this is the part that makes me laugh, a lot of people think that Having more stuff or more distractions will fill up that hole. And where is that hole? They usually reach up and touch where their heart is. Right. And so it's where that inner being is. It's about developing this relationship with our inner being. Are we paying attention when it's telling us certain things or to go here to make this phone call to uh, talk to this person? I mean, that's kind of how you and I met, <laughs> You know. Absolutely. You know, most of my life has been that. And most of, you know, my bad decisions have been when I don't pay attention to that intuition or inner voice. But most of the times when I have a hunch of the right timings, I have a hunch of when to, for example, post something, share something, create content. I have this very strong hunch. Actually, it's louder than my regular mind. I don't know how you will call it. Maybe my, the little mind versus the big mind, right? I have, it's like a pulling. It's like a, a gravity that pulls me into an action that it doesn't have a foundation of a, a linear thought, but it's totally nonlinear, but it works. It works. I don't know how, you know, it's like our connection, you and I, we felt that field, right? We felt it. We felt it because I was talking about, about futuring and I'll ask you a couple of questions about the future in a moment, but uh, we felt it. And I, for example, me, I keep feeling that's why, you know, I'm insisting for us to keep being in the podcast because I, I felt like, oh my gosh, the, the message of Dr. Jeffrey for spirituality, for the future of humanity is so needed right now. And I want to be part of, of advocating for that message. And so that's why we're together right now, too, because I heard that voice and you heard it too. Right, exactly. And, and there's no mistaking it. You just know. You know, and, and exactly. I've had that happen just like you with a lot of different people. It's like these messages that came to me, people brought these messages to me. I knew it wasn't a joke. 
I knew it was uh, something to pay attention to or somebody that I needed to work with for what, and I may not even know what the reason was. And you, I know that you've probably felt this, that you just know. And so you just follow that intuition, that guidance that you are receiving. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the bigger question is, when we get the guidance, will we follow that? Well, that that's depends it. on what's that's going the, on in yes. our life. You know, Dr. Fanning, I think that that's what differentiates people that go into, uh, in, in, in a system that I teach called futuring, there is two ways to create future. Either you go towards creating success or you focus on creating fulfillment. Fulfillment will bring you more brilliance and brilliant futures are meant to be the expansiveness of the mind. It's, it's tapping into the morphogenetic field of God, of creation, of nature. You transcend the me to the we. You transcend even the we to the, to the legacy that will matter, that will continue because since your energy will never die, you know you will continue and you create fulfillment based of that, right? And so you, you, you create this this, this, this life um, based on this knowing. And I love the word knowing because Dr. Fanning, I don't know if you've noticed, but the word knowing inside of the word has the word now in. It's like I'm locking the now and I'm going to take action. And if I don't take action and I do mediocre actions towards success, towards I just want the money, I just want survival, you know, it's that knowing begins to fade. I've noticed it all the times because I've been in all the uh, spectrums of, of creative, uh, of creation, right? And, and when I don't take immediate action. One, it begins to fade intuition. The power of the results that I could have got by taking immediate action fades. Uh, worry starts kicking in. My survival mechanisms kick in. My amygdala begins to be more active than my prefrontal and my cortex and my parietal lobe. So I begin to be more a survival based human than a God created, uh, being, right? So knowing it's, it works when I take immediate action, I begin Begin to build a life of fulfillment versus just temporary success. But that's my experience. Oh, I agree with you 100% on all of that. And uh, uh, as you were talking, the thoughts were coming to mind because I've been doing a lot of studying between the uh, conscious or the thinking part of our brain and the subconscious. And, and I think it all begins there. You're, what you're talking about is kind of a higher level or a higher order of being aware and utilizing that field and that energy. But it all begins with dealing with the uh, uh, the conscious or the thinking part of our brain that does the desiring. And then the subconscious, which is really uh, that part of our brain that creates the rules. And a subconscious thought is nothing more than a thought we have over and over and over again that gets recorded down there. So uh, as a quick example here, let's suppose a person wants more money and they go, I want more money, I want more money. That is the thinking part of the brain doing the desiring. And then, so it runs down to the subconscious and says, what is our rule about money? So wherever we learned it growing up or wherever, it doesn't really matter. But wow. the subconscious then says, oh, uh, the rule about money is you don't deserve more money. And so things do not come to us. So what we need to understand is there's a way to perfect that function. So uh, we know how powerful the body is. Let's take a, a very quick example. Let's say that I want more help. And uh, one of the things that I, I, I haven't talked with a lot of people about is a few years back, I had a stroke, never saw it coming. You know, woke up, uh, you know, on the bathroom floor in a puddle of blood. You know, my face had hit the, the tile there. And wow. uh, and so with the things that I know and the things that I do, I was able to change it and recover from that. So this wasn't about saying, uh, make me well. Uh, uh, it, when we go to, instead of saying, I want more money, I want more money, the desiring part of this, we have to simplify it for the brain. So this would be more like saying help. So I'm focusing on help. And there might be different parts of that. There might be tingling in my feet. There might be tingling in my brain, whatever it is. But uh, the brain knows what it needs to do in order to make these changes. But if my focus is on help, uh, we're going to let the, the subconscious part of the brain to come up with uh, what it needs to do to create help. 
And maybe that's about abundance. Maybe it's about a relationship. Maybe it's about whatever it is. But this is about being able to utilize this rather than just the mechanism of our subconscious, but helping our subconscious know what it is that we want so that the desiring part of our brain can uh, do the desiring part, but it's a subconscious that actually brings it about, you know. And so here's a little tidbit for your audience here, and that is uh, that only 5% of everything that we think, say, and do comes from our conscious or our thinking brain. 90% of everything that we think, say, and do comes from the subconscious. Now, one other fact to that, and that is that we know scientifically 80 to 85% of all the thoughts that you have today, and most people will have anywhere between 60,000 and 90,000 thoughts a day. So 80 to 85% of those thoughts that you have today are the same thoughts you had yesterday. And yes, they will be yes. the same <laughs> ones you have tomorrow. You know, oh, so gosh. how are we utilizing that? What are we training our brain to do to think about, to bring about what it is that we want? Or are we caught up in all the distractions, you know, the uh, the things that go on in the world we live in a crazy world. I think most of us would agree on yeah, that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's overload for the sensory integration system. There's no integration system right now like this not hijacked. In my, in my, in my observation, right, it's, it's really hard right now for people to, to live an integrated manner. That's why your work is so important right now. Well, and I think that's for all of us, you know, what I, what I'm seeing are people who are specialists in different areas. They've been doing this for 25, 30 years. Now they are coming together in communities and helping each other and getting the word out and helping. So yeah, the science is there. We understand what the science is. This is about teaching other people. This is about people being willing to learn, being willing to put that into action instead of just dealing with the base things of, I want this, I want this, I want this, and hoping that it's going to come. That's not how it works, is it? Yes. Yeah, and you know what? This this brings me to a question, you know, um, and I think you did an article. I've been obsessed with reading your work, and you did an article about how our thoughts sometimes hold us hostage, and you did a, a presentation for the Equine Society. See, I've been doing my homework, you know, and um, <laughs> And, and holding them hostage, I see this all of the time. I meet so much incredible people, talented people that I see like not only their potential, but who they are, their soul, their ability to create, to attract, to magnetize, to live in abundance consciousness instead of lack. But they have, and you just said, people need to be willing to learn. They have an unwillingness to do the work and they immediately go into defense. I, I don't meditate. I don't need that stuff. I, I, I do it this way. And, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it, they shortcut, uh, you know, progress, not, not the shortcut progress. They try to stop their progress by shortcutting the, the way that they, they need to do the inner work, but they don't do it. They don't do it. And they just go in automatic, overwhelmed pilot, hustle, hustle, hustle. And they don't have any results because their own willingness to do the work. So how can we help people understand that they have to do the inner work, which what is, what is brain health, spiritual health, physical fitness health? How can we help them uh, to understand well, without yeah. taking defense, be, being defensive because of this? I think that's a really, really good point, Yvonne. And that is, uh, you know, what, where can we go to get help? So there are people like you that have programs that can teach people. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I created and just launched not only my YouTube channel, but also a, uh, um, a, uh, what am I trying to say here? Uh, blog. And I had never really written blogs before, but I really didn't want to write another book. But I thought what I need to do is create things that help people. So I created this blog called Breaking Out of the Box. Now, here's the the premise of all of that. We each build a uh, a wall around ourselves. One wall has to do with what other people have a perception about us. You know, you can do this, uh, this is how you are. So they tell us that, and we actually believe most people about that. Second wall has to do with uh, uh, what the world tells us we should do and or not do. And then the third wall deals with uh, our self 
perception. What do we think about ourselves? Well, I can do this. I can't do that sort of thing or, or whatever. And then the fourth wall is how we actually learn. So it's not the uh, podcast that you listen. 